If you listen and take evasive action, I can help you change your future. The following few moments may very well change your life. But I wish someone had told me this when I was your age. You can change today if you redefine what success is for you. Work, you, you can transform your damaged relationships. It's very scary sometimes to accept the dream that you have. God's love is more than enough. Everything I've ever said before pales in comparison to what I'm about to share with you. My goal is for you to forget me and my voice, and simply to know the truth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. I care deeply about your soul, and I'm here to remind you today that life is vapor. Your soul is immortal. The penalty of sin is death, and eternity is forever. I'm asking you in loving kindness. To deeply contemplate life's most important questions, including what is my true purpose? Why am I truly here? What happens when we die? And finally, where will I spend eternity? The answer to all these questions and more are revealed in the real story of God. In the 66 books of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God, perfect and true in every way. It is a love letter of truth, knowledge, and wisdom, with undisputed prophecies and full revelation of how God reveals Himself to us from start to finish. He is the Alpha. And the Omega, the first and the last. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I implore you to study biblical hermeneutics, which deeply investigates the original Aramaic, Hebrew, and Greek languages for contextual accuracy from transcripts, and deals with biblical interpretation and a deeper understanding of the Word of God. Hermeneutics is one of the first courses in seminary, college for pastors and ministers. It is also available free of charge through strivingforeternity.org under Jewish raised Christian pastor and author Andrew Rapoport of Striving for Eternity Ministries. All the treasures of wisdom, truth, and knowledge of God are hidden in the mysteries of Christ. Psalm. Chapter 19, verse 1 reveals: The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of His hands. We cannot deny God's existence, and cannot truly know anything without Him. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power, and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, 
so that they are without excuse. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. Great comfort of living waters encourages disciples of Christ to ask everyone we encounter, do you think you are a good person? Naturally, our human pride wants to respond, yes, of course I'm a good person. But are we truly? What standards are you judging yourself by? Your moral standard or God's commandments? In the end, will you or will God judge you for eternity? I'm not judging you. I'm pleading with you to deeply contemplate the following questions and realize the spiritual emergency most are in, which you might not be fully aware of the eternal consequences thereof. Take a pause after each question and truly answer with your heart, mind, and spirit. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever looked with lust at a man or woman other than your spouse? Have you had premarital sex? Have you ever been so angry that you hated someone? Have you used God's name as a curse word? Have you ever wanted someone else's stuff? If we're honest in the silence, we can admit that we might have been liars, thieves, adulterers at heart, angry murderers of the heart, and most certainly have coveted other things or some combination thereof. Maybe much worse. It's humbling to admit We've done wrong, and while we can hide it from humans, God knows every thought, word, action, or deed we'll ever do. Everything we've ever done, even in secret. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 35 through 37 clarifies it best. The good man brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. We must humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness before a perfect and holy God, and be reminded that Lucifer's sin was pride too. It was the reason for his rebellion with a third of the angels, in an attempt to overthrow God. Lucifer, known as Satan or the devil, was defeated by God and cast down to earth as it is written in the book of Revelation. Chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The devil is a lying deceptive, manipulative, and defeated foe of God and his children. Satan seeks to destroy, devour, and deceive many to spend eternity in hell with him and his fallen demons. Hell is a very real place, and I don't want you to end up there forever. Please hear this word. Hell is an eternal conscious torment for those who reject Jesus Christ and leave this earth dead in their sins. Jesus is the Lamb of God and takes away the sins of the world. We are called to repent of sin and trust in Him alone for salvation. Ezekiel's prophecy states, Blessed are you, and blessed are your children, and blessed are the eyes that so see. And again in the book of Solomon, the richest man that ever lived. Blessed is the eye that sees and the ear that hears, and the heart that understands and causes to understand the wisdom of it. The book of Romans sums it up best. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus became the perpetual payment for sin, 
when he died on the cross to those who repent and trust in him. He rose again proving he was God. He fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah 53, written 700 years before Christ came to earth, about him coming as Messiah perfectly. If you know any Jewish friends, please ask them to take a second look at Isaiah 53, which reads, But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of his own to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people, to whom the stroke was due. His grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death, because he had done no violence. Nor was there any deceit in his mouth, but the Lord was pleased to crush him putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days. And the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand as a result of the anguish of his soul. He will see it and be satisfied. By whose knowledge the righteous one, my servant will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the booty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many dwelling places, If it were not so, I would not have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. We are saved by his grace through faith alone. True love requires truth, and I truly love you. And if you are hearing this, this good news of the gospel of Jesus is for you too. We all need a savior in him. 160,000 people die every day, and many are on the path to eternal destruction for the penalty of sin and death. No one is perfect, but Jesus was the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Repent of your sin and trust in Jesus alone for salvation. He will restore your soul. He will grant you eternal life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Seek him as he is seeking you. All true believers love the light. Come to the light. Obey the Son. Practice the truth. Worship in spirit and truth. Honor God, do good deeds, eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. Love God, follow Jesus and keep his commandments. It seems the Holy Spirit's ministry of convicting people of sin and its consequences has the specific purpose of laying the groundwork for repentance. Repentance is highlighted in the book of John, which teaches that Jesus is God and we must receive him as God. Our first duty in coming to him is to repent, which means to humbly ask for forgiveness and turn away from our sin. 
all believers who accept that Jesus is Lord receive the Holy Spirit, the living God inside of them. We become the temple of the living God on earth to do the will of our Father. Jesus said, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. I am a voice shouting, Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Could you imagine achieving everything on earth without finding Jesus die and face an eternal conscious punishment forever in a lake of fire? What could the devil, the ruler of this earth, offer you that would be worth an eternity in hellfire? Yet, you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and it vanishes away. Regardless of what we accomplish or achieve on earth, if we love money more than God who created us, we'll have missed the mark and faced eternal consequences for rejecting the only one who can save us from the penalty of sin. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 summarizes it best. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. We must repent and trust in him who can restore our souls and covers all our sins, past, present and future, with his sacrifice on the cross more than 2,000 years ago. He died for you and I both. For once I was blind, but now I see. How can we get right with God again? He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How can we atone for our sin against such a perfect and holy God? We cannot ever make up for any sin with good deeds. We are not saved by works, but saved by his grace through faith alone. Jesus came to earth to die for our sins and became the eternal bridge or mediator between God and man. His sacrifice on the cross was more than enough to save all mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. John 3, 16, 17. You might never realize that God is all you need until God is all you have. Our human vessels are sinful in nature. Anyone that tells you that they are sinless perfectionists are lying. We don't have to be perfect. Jesus was and still is, and his work on the cross was more than enough. There will be a day when we all realize we can't take any riches or material wealth with us when we die. There is a day when the Ten Commandments are set before us to convict our hearts, to show us all how contrary most of us live to God's law. One day, we will all realize we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and all desperately need a Savior in Jesus Christ. Make today an eternal day for the glory of God as I call to you to repent and trust in Him alone. Father God, I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. Our true purpose on this earth 
is to find God. Repent for our sins and trust in Jesus, realizing we are uniquely and wonderfully made in the image of God. Then share the good news of the gospel, because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And only to save by his grace through faith alone, not because of any works, for God knew we would boast. There are many ways to find Christ, but you must now know down to your soul that Jesus is the only way to the Father. For it is said that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Start training today for the emotional, spiritual, and possibly physical giants you'll face while on earth. We're called to put on the full armor of God. Why do we need armor, do you ask? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. You must quickly realize the ruler of this world you live in is Satan, the devil himself masquerading as the false god of this world, fulfilling the evil desires and love of man the selfish, carnal desires of the men and women, sinful in nature from the fall of Adam and Eve. Hollywood and Big Pharma, the modern-day pharma-kia industry, have put a witchcraft spell on the whole world, and billions have already been deceived, and billions more will be deceived when the fallen one returns promising peace and safety, possibly mind-computer implants and even the mark of the beast for commerce. Beware, my brothers and sisters. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust in him through whatever tribulation we will face. Do not be deceived by whatever Star Wars-style deceptive production in the sky the evil one will attempt to further deceive, even possibly introduce demons masquerading as aliens. Do not believe them or their false evolution myths and unproven theories. Seek out truth and wisdom shared from Christian medical doctor Anthony Silvestro and his creation revival ministry to easily defend your faith and share the gospel more effectively. God created the heavens and the earth, all the galaxies, creatures, plants, animals, planets, stars, moons, and sun, as well as you and I. We are made in his image. Stand up for the truth, share the gospel, and always test the spirits to see behind the veil. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 explains it best. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. Jesus said, For false Christs and false prophets will arise, and show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead. If possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or, Behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. In China since the time of the Ming Dynasty, between the years of 1368 and 1644, following the collapse of the Mongol-led Yuan Dynasty, a false Christian non-biblical gospel teaching concept has been deceiving millions for 400 years. It has been rebranded in the 90s as Eastern Lightning or Church of the Almighty God. These cults falsely teach Jesus has returned as a woman, which is simply untrue. Ephesians chapter 5 tells us, Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. 
for it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Please seek out the Christian Apologetics Reformed Ministry to answer many common questions from believers of false religions. Deception is very prevalent, and sadly people are easily deceived. We are to share each other's burdens, share knowledge and truth to help prevent fellow brothers and sisters from stumbling into a false teaching or even cults. Brother Matthew Slick has spent his lifetime serving God, researching all religions and sharing valuable knowledge free of charge for Christian apologetics at calm.org. Jesus warned in prophecy as against false teachers and false prophets and even described himself in the book of Revelation when he returns on the great and terrible day of the Lord. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diamonds. And he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the wine press of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty, and on his robe, and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Jesus shared many prophecies with us to protect us from the deception, which will be great and overwhelming. Do not be afraid, do not be deceived or fearful of wars or rumors of wars, earthquakes and raging waters or peaks and valleys of life. He will never leave you nor forsake you even until the end of the world. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14 says, Near is the great day of the Lord, near and coming very quickly. Listen, the day of the Lord. In it the warrior cries out bitterly, A day of wrath is that day, a day of trouble and distress, a day of destruction and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and the high corner towers. I will bring distress on men so that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood will be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them on the day of the Lord's wrath. And all the earth will be devoured in the fire of his jealousy. For he will make a complete end, indeed a terrifying one, of all the inhabitants of the earth. Seek him like your immortal soul depends on it, because it does. If you're a disciple of Jesus, please share the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with everyone you meet as you go. He commanded us in Matthew chapter 28 to share the gospel to all people and all nations. So please be encouraged to do so without fear or persecution. As Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. True love requires truth. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. He is the only way to heaven, the only way to the Father. 
Be encouraged to share the good news with everyone you know in loving kindness, compassion, patience, and be prepared by staying in the Word, finding a local Bible-based church for learning, fellowship, small groups, and outreach ministries for training and edification. When we are squeezed in life, when pressure or disappointment crushes our spirit, what's truly inside comes out of us. As someone wisely said, bad trees produce bad fruit, which yield many bitter jams. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. The book of John, chapter 8, verses 31, says it best. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 assures believers, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And first, John chapter 4 verse 4 empowers us when facing foes, seen and unseen. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus Christ's work on the cross for forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life is more than enough. His grace is sufficient, his reign is righteous, and his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. You didn't hear this by accident. This was prepared before both of us, one to create and one to watch, all for the glory of God. Men and women can and will let us down, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Human love is never enough, but God's love is more than enough. His grace and love is greater than all of our sin combined. Repent and trust in Christ alone, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ is alive and will one day return. And insomuch as it is appointed for men to die once and after this comes judgment, so Christ also having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. Stay in the Word, pray and meditate day and night. Share the Gospel and trust in God always regardless of the trials and tribulations of life. As one of my friends and mentors, Pastor Michael Bethune says in prayers, Be grateful and thank God every day for waking us up on this side of heaven. And start walking, my brothers and sisters. Today is a gift. Renew your mind. Take a second look at your heart. Ask Jesus into the middle of any and every challenge you face. And as Pastor Andrew Rappaport reminds us, to remember to make today an eternal day for the glory of God. Please be encouraged to walk by faith and not by sight. Please be encouraged to share this message and your own testimony for Christ to the world. The world needs a savior, now more than ever. And his name is Jesus. God bless you and your families, always and forever. In the name of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Amen. Is the way the truth and the life. 
Seek him, as he is seeking you.